world of undisclosed location in the great western desert in the land of the free and autonomous Native American people, the 2024 presidential campaign in the next time to return all U.S. land back to their rights owners. This is the Ben Zion Podcast. Techno-communism will win. The Ben Zion Show, um, and a good evening to you. I'm having um, the rare cup of coffee. I have not, uh, not so much coffee anymore. This is always an exciting time. I don't really think that coffee is a product. I should be, I should have cut out coffee for my health a long time ago. I knew coffee was bad for me when I started drinking it heavily, uh, teaching night school. (laughs) That didn't stop me then. Uh, But the thing that kind of did influence my decision as much as health, health was a consideration, not spring chicken, um, is, um, was that it's not an, um, there, there's there's no there's no sourcing of this product that's not relying on uh, a kind of exploitation that we could just call slavery, just like we call the United States fascism. Something you say it's not literal fascism, it's not literal slavery, it's literal fucking slavery. Uh, you can't, and even if you're buying uh, coffee that's sourced in that way, you're supporting an industry you don't know that you really are, and you're supporting an industry that um, uh, is just. Um, it's like diamonds. Don't don't buy diamonds. Don't buy coffee. Um, don't buy chocolate. And probably don't even buy anything with sugar in it. <laughs> We're going to talk about uh, a little bit, of, very briefly, about consumer habits. This is going to be a short show, um, but um, uh, you know, I. So I'll tell you the story of how I got this coffee, um, in the by way of starting this uh, conversation about consumer habits. Um, I I kept my um, I kept my uh, Keurig that I've recycled. Uh, set up in my kitchen. Um, even though I'm drinking tea more often now, I um, I will get some coffee when it's on sale. So I bought a pound of coffee of a holiday variety for a dollar. It's kind of has a chocolatey flavor. It's not really too holiday, and it's pretty good. Um, and then I was visiting my friend. We went and played a board game, and um, and they gave me a whole bunch of disposable K cups, uh, not reusable K cups. And um, I kind of, first I was like, no, I don't want those disposable K-cups. And they're like, come on, man, I'm just going to, people know my weaknesses. <laughs> they're like, come on, man, I'm just going to throw them away. I'm like, ah, you can always, if you ever, if you ever want Ben Zion to take something, you can just be like, it's going to go in the trash, going in the trash. And I'll be like, oh, fine. <laughs> um, uh, but I, but this, the, why, why, why am I this way? Because I'm a weird person. Um, but um, also because um, um, I really, really try to resist, uh, uh, consumerist ways of being in the world, um, which is not something that's easy to do or something that's uh, con- convenient or fun for people. They don't think it's fun. They think consumerism is fun. Um, uh, but um, it's it's the, uh, it's, it's all, what we all have to do. It's tighten the belt a little bit now in these areas or uh, live like an animal in three or four decades. Those are your two choices. <laughs> uh, so... Um, you might say, oh, Ben, this is this is dirtbag stuff you're talking about. But free cycling and not drinking, um, free cycling and not drinking uh, uh, coffee. Oh, well, that's that's all weird stuff. I'm not going to do it. You should do stuff like this. Um, but I'll say I say it all the time. I'll say it again. The thing you really need to do, I would trade um, um, a thousand, a thousand people living a specialized. Um, uh, uh, consumerist lifestyle, anti-consumerist lifestyle, uh, for two or three uh, good people uh, uh, doing real work uh, toward revolutionary action. But you have to do all of those things. Just because there's an ordering of importance of these things doesn't mean you don't get to do uh, the other things. Everybody is responsible for this earth, and we're all in the West particularly um, responsible uh, for uh, the damage that's been done to the earth, and we have to uh, do more than that uh, to try to undo it. No one's no one's really doing it. Everybody says this is they're doing this liberal thing. Uh, yeah, this is bad. Someone should do about something about this. Well, here's the things we could do. We could uh, make uh, animal um, um, animal products illegal. We could make factory farming and um, and uh, effectively uh, uh, livestock systems Ill- illegal. We could make uh, that. That's not hard to do. We could uh, ban petroleum products. That's not hard to do. You say, well, we need petroleum products for some things. Well, then we would use them for those limited number of things. But all of that would be a tiny amount of environmental impact compared to what we're doing. And this is the West that's done this. 
um, and um, it's it's got to be fixed. Uh, uh, so uh, this is this is our responsibility, but more so it's our responsibility to, of course, uh, lead the charge to toward a world where uh, systems are designed uh, to to uh, uh, for human beings and for uh, sustainability. Uh, that's more important, right? But all of this is important. I, every time when I talk about veganism with communists, they say there are things that are more important. Yeah, no shit, there are things that are more important. That doesn't mean you don't do the less important thing. That doesn't mean you get to say that the less important thing is not something anyone should do. These are, There are um, uh, people uh, who have big accounts by communist standards, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of followers who will say this sort of thing. They And, and these... And what all, almost all, everything that they're saying about veganism or about uh, consumer habits generally are uh, corporate talking points from these different sectors. They're just repeating corporate talking points. The, uh, the, the, the bread tube left, uh, the, the streamers and, um, and, and shit posters, because uh, a lot of these people don't even identify as communists either. Um, they're followed by and adored by communists. Uh, they make a living off of the backs of communists, and they don't identify as communists, and they repeat uh, capitalist talking points all day long. So fuck those guys, you know. And you know I'm blocked by some of these people. Uh, Chris Richards, he's a Twitter a poster whose work I used to follow constantly, and I would still probably follow him. But we got into it over veganism, and he's saying corporate talking points, and now I'm blocked with him, by him. And until he blocks me, I'm going to keep saying on my blog, fuck that guy. <laughs> uh, until he unblocks me. No, no. But um, there's there's no excuse for this kind of thing, siding with a corporation. For God's sake, fucking evil ass Bill Gates. Literally a, an evil billionaire. Probably, arguably one of the thousand worst people of the uh, contemporary times. Um, it, maybe 10,000 worst people of contemporary times. It's hard to make that list. <laughs> Um, uh, is uh, is to the left of the average Western communist on abolishing livestock systems. Tell me something that's not more embarrassing than that. That's fucking humiliating that Bill Gates is, is further left on abolishing livestock systems than communists. Man, it, uh, what the, who the fuck are these people? You, you, most, most of the uh, big accounts and streamers just hips are jackasses. They don't know anything. They they don't deviate significantly from uh, what any uh, liberal would say on most subjects. Um, moving on to um, a vegan product. This is a show is, is kind of talking about um, uh, uh, food. Um, uh, there's a uh, speaking of capitalist talking points. I keep seeing uh, these same dirtbag leftists uh, post almost the same thing about a uh, well you know if um if we did x y or z sort of uh rad lip thing sort of lefty thing um then we wouldn't have such expensive eggs it's like eggs are something that's killing the planet okay um there's egg substitutes that don't kill the planet uh yeah they're expensive too those all those prices for food stuff should be coming down but things that are things that are stolen from a sentient being uh, things that are cut from a sentient being uh, should be illegal, especially if they're killing the planet. Um, and almost none of these people even will even say that. So I'm going to read an article from Gizmodo, another um, capitalist publication that I don't endorse. But um, this is Andrew Lazuski. Uh, Yo eggs, poached eggs, are made from soy, chickpea, and other plant-based ingredients. And I talked about, um, not about yo eggs, but about just eggs, a product that um, I've tried uh, many, many times, and they taste exactly like eggs. And if you're still buying eggs um, that are and complaining about the price of eggs, um, you know, I sympathize with your food woes, but consider the livestock uh, system problem that is killing the planet and adjust uh, your behavior accordingly. Um, Americans can finally dodge high egg prices with vegan poached egg substitute. So maybe this is cheaper um, than uh, just egg, which is a little on the expensive side. Um, I don't eat eggs, egg products as much as I used to because just eggs are expensive. <laughs> um, but there you go. Andrew Lazuski seems to think they're uh, pretty cheap. Um, we're starting to feel the effects of the avian flu. Yeah. Uh, Jesus. I mean, you had a ton of misinformation. 
pure misinformation about a wet market in Wuhan, China, and there was a bat there and some crazy Chinese person, because that's the main thing you need to know about Chinese people uh, from mainland China is that they're weird, not that they're the actually the most responsible human beings on earth. No, just that they're weird. <laughs> That's what the Western media tells you, which is a lie. Everything about, almost everything you hear about China, North Korea, is just, it's something out of a storybook. Um, and um, uh, so avian flu is a problem. In fact, there's any number of pathogens that you can catch from poultry, any number of pathogens that are routinely also um, made worse, pup Things that have come into your line of sight in just the last few years are made worse by livestock systems. Uh, beef, pig, um, and, and chicken, most particularly. These are things, uh, along with some uh, seafood things that have a pretty devastating effect on certain systems. Uh, these are things that should be completely illegal. Um, you say, oh, but, but we've been eating. No, you haven't been eating those things. It was only a few generations ago when you ate them quite sparingly and when the environmental impact was negligible. You don't live in that world anymore, so fucking live in reality. Uh, these things should be illegal. And, you know, I'm not going to tell you that if you have to uh, get food where you get it, then, and that, then that's your life. But you should be telling everyone you know that these things should be illegal, not making excuses for the worst people alive, not making excuses for capitalists because of your fascist sympathy. Well, this is a pretty good product, um, and if it's made uh, more sustainably, these articles always say plant-based products aren't any healthier. Of course they're healthier. Uh, they don't spread disease. Um, uh, they don't clog your arteries. Of course they're healthier. Uh, but they do. They are uh, hyper-processed foods, uh, which has its own set of complexities. Um, and... Um, uh, uh, but still, it's it's not a margin call. They're much healthier. Eating And if you're eating a plant-based diet, you're not just eating uh, bags and bags of Beyond Beef and just eggs. You're eating most a, a wide variety of things, most of which are not hyper-processed. Uh, so obviously, you're going to be healthier in that scenario. <laughs> um, uh, the, um, uh, the, the, so the, yeah, these kinds of products are getting better. Uh, getting back to uh, uh, consumerism, I said this. It's going to be a little on the short side. I guess uh, we'll talk. Uh, this next uh, bit is uh, uh, from a, a China watcher. Ooh, China watchers. They're a whole big business in the West. They're not any more knowledgeable of, about China than just your drunk Uncle Lou. Um, uh, ten, uh, uh, 10 industries China is focusing on automating. Uh, still, I'm, I read, I'll read articles by China watchers. <laughs> uh, but... Um, um, uh, China's, mystery of China's Ministry of Industry and Information Technology, along with 17 other agencies, created a new action plan called the Robot Plus Application Action Plan. That's an interesting name. Uh, this plan lays out 10 industries uh, the country wants to focus on developing uh, robotic systems for and overarching goals for the company's robotics industry uh, to hit by 2025. Okay, how, are, how is robotics changing in the wake of what seems to be a renaissance in even, you could say, an artificial intelligence explosion occurring in the course of the 2020s. Um, um, this has implications for you, right? Um, especially when it's done by China, who has a mandate uh, for uh, doing things a little bit in a, in a little bit more reasonable way. Socialists uh, do things in the more reasonable way. Um, they, they try to... Um, uh, take care of people, believe it or not, um, and mostly what you hear, learn about China um, suggests otherwise, uh, because it's fascist propaganda. Um, uh, China hopes to accelerate the use of robotics in manufacturing, agriculture, architecture, logistics, energy, healthcare, education, elderly services, commercial community service, uh, things like Pudu robotics, service robots, and emergency and extreme environment applications. The plan's goal for the Chinese robotics industry includes achieving more than 100 innovative robotics applications and over 200 model use cases where those technologies can be applied by 2025. Okay, a lot of sectors uh, using uh, new forms of automation in interesting ways within the next year or two. Um, China also hopes 
uh, to have around 500 robots per 10,000 workers by 2025. In 2021, China averaged 322 industrial robots for every 10,000 workers. So that's more. <laughs> According to the Industrial Federation of Robotics, um, IFR data shows that I, China has been aggressively installing more robots in the country. Uh, in 2021, uh, the country's robot, uh, industrial robotics market saw 234,300 installations, a 44% increase from the year before. Those installations are evident in China's jumps from being tied uh, for the ninth most automated country worldwide in 2020 to fifth most automated in 2021, uh, surpassing Chinese Taipei, the United States, Hong Kong, and Sweden in robot density. So even if you're thinking in terms of um, ordinary uh, technological development, let's say you're more inclined to think that we're in the midst of an artificial intelligence renaissance, as opposed to the artificial intelligence winters of past uh, years. These things kind of uh, wax and wane. Um, uh, as opposed to what I'm thinking, that we're looking at uh, singularitarian effects, an artificial intelligence takeoff that will culminate uh, sometime maybe in the 2030s uh, with an incredible new society. Uh, that's up to you, of course. It could easily be a neo-reactionary society. That's what the United States government and Western countries want. Um, it's up to you to fight for the better thing, the thing that will save more lives, the thing that will be more sustainable because um, the fa fascists in control of um, hypercapitalists in control of um, uh, systems that are even more sophisticated just means that they will do that much more damage to the environment. They've done progressively more damage as they've gotten more uh, pow powerful uh, uh, powerful manufacturing and, uh, and other capabilities, and they're going to keep doing more and more damage. We have to get rid of capitalists. There's no, say, there's no narrative, no matter what very, very sneaky think tanks by the hundreds and hundreds across the United States will try to convince you there's no story of your future wherein capitalists are in control and in significant numbers and uh, the planet is not killed. Um, only, the only way is uh, to defeat capitalism once and for all, and that requires that you take this hardline techno-socialist position. Um, not merely um, a, a, a Marxist position of, of years past uh, that doesn't... Uh, re relate very uh, closely to artificial intelligence and emer emerging technology, but the techno-communist position um, uh, that I espouse on this um, is uh, is the winning ticket. Um, uh, 500 robots for every 10,000 employees is still only half uh, the robot density of South Korea, which reached an all-time high of 1,000 robots for every 10,000 employees in 2021. In December 2021, China's Ministry of Industry and Information Technology in collaboration with 14 other government departments revealed how it will continue to grow the country's robotics industry in its 14th five-year plan. Uh, the document lays out several smaller goals for the Chinese robotics industry before 2025, but the overarching goal is to make China a key source of global robotics innovation. Uh, the uh, government also expects the annual average growth rate of operating income in the robotics industry to exceed 20%. Uh, the city plans to scale its local industry to 14.76 uh, 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 billion in the next few years and build 10 ind industry-leading robot brands, 10 benchmark robot application scenarios, 20 leading factories, and 200 smart factories as far as robot density within Shanghai. The city aims to reach 100 units for every 10,000 people. So um, this is uh, pretty exciting, exciting uh, news. And uh, why, why has China grown? So much more in automation in the last decade while the United States has stagnated. Why has China's economy grown so much faster than Western economies? Well, for the quite much the same reason that um, uh, that I often point to of the United States relative to Cuba, uh, because taking care of people means taking care of these kinds uh, of sectors as well. But also uh, for, because of this uh, slightly more exotic uh, story that I like to tell, uh, about um, uh, what what happens in the two scenarios, uh, the military industrial complex in the tech accelerationist framework uh, versus uh, the uh, more open source and ultimately um, uh, citizen centered uh, approach to uh, the just just yesterday, I read an article to you about um, a brain computer interface product that's doing incredible work 
or otherly, people, otherly able people right now will be very soon that it will be able to do even more incredible work for you, completely change your experience and lifestyle, completely change socio-political dynamics. So in that scenario where um, brain computer interfaces and AI exist and are changing the face of civilization, who wins? The military industrial complex who hires a bunch of goons who will grudgingly do their dirty work and it's really a hundred or 200 people or um, huge numbers of workers in China, in Beijing, in Shanghai, in um, other other cities within the Chinese sphere of influence as time wears on, who are literally becoming a hive mind. Who's, who's the more powerful there? This is the time when we have to, uh, in the, at least in the interest of, um, in the interest of self-preservation, at least uh, set aside our uh, reservations about collectivism, because what uh, we understood to be collectivism of the 20th century is not the collectivism of the 21st century. It's a, it's a difference between um, two different species. I round this out uh, with something that I alluded to in the last episode. Uh, this is um, a piece by Jordan Novit. Uh, this is on CNBC.com. What do you think, Marxists? Is CNBC.com a good news source? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, CNBC.com are, are hard, hard, hardcore fascists. <laughs> uh, but nevertheless, um, I thought this might be a little interesting to you. Microsoft will let companies uh, create their own custom versions of ChatGTP. Microsoft, as I alluded to, if you hadn't heard, is incorporating ChatGTP, a natural language processor that allows you to do all manner of work much more easily um, into its uh, services, into its Bing service. And um, um, this um, has implications for things that you do as in almost, in I think every one of these episodes, most of these recent episodes, um, it, after the headline, it says, ChatGTP uh, will help you plan a world revolution because it'll write copy for you to that effect and do other things. If you use more tailored uh, uh, guidelines, it will do even more than that than just write bland copy. It will help you work. Uh, so you could use it with your friends. You say, well, none of us, uh, uh, none of us are copy editors. Uh, none of us are English majors. Uh, but we need to um, uh, put together an action plan uh, for what we're what we want to work on locally, or um, a, an X, Y, and Z thing. Um, um, at larger, larger and larger groups of people can do uh, things more and more on a national or an international scale, uh, which is why I encourage you. Uh, we should be putting together a work group, a World Revolution uh, NLP work group, um, and um, um, I would encourage you to try to do that with those in your circle. Um, um, so this is of interest. I believe this to be of interest. Microsoft plans to release technology to help uh, big companies launch their own chatbots using the OpenAI chat TGG, uh, PT technology. A person familiar with the plans uh, said, companies will be able to remove Microsoft or OpenAI branding when they release chatbots developed with the software. Uh, Microsoft is working on incorporating chat GPT technology into many of its products, including Bing and Edge, which is announced uh, Tuesday. Uh, so there's uh, consumer level uh, uses of this. They're incentivizing um, you monetizing uses, and they will uh, in turn um, remove some of the barriers to entry for you, which sucks. <laughs> um, but you, uh, you nevertheless might uh, be able to uh, make some uh, use of this in a um, positive or even revolutionary uh, context, I should hope. Um, I'm not gonna read this whole article because fuck, Fuck MSNBC. Uh, that's, uh, but that's the main, uh, uh, well, fuck MSNBC and fuck CNBC. <laughs> fuck them both. <laughs> They're both the same parent corporation, obviously. <laughs> um, um, I'll, uh, I'll uh, do one more, uh, one more of these bits. I was going to do something, uh, a show about gaming, but not really feeling it. Um, uh, so another one of these uh, le left recent uh, leftist cliches is um, uh, arguing about AI art, um, saying well, we have to, we have to. It, it, it's almost a perfect echo of the arguments uh, by the Ned Ludd supporters, Luddites, who are probably a little bit misunderstood by uh, history, 
a little bit misunderstood by technologists who you know, just use this uh, word to um, dismiss people who are not technologists, which is foolish. Um, um, but, but nevertheless, um, uh, in the case, uh, the, the people who are the analogs to the Luddites in this argument are people who are um, against AI art. And uh, they are against it because they support the artisan and artist, um, um, uh, which is a, a valid thing to do. But in doing so, what they're mostly really doing, almost all of their arguments, are upholding um, uh, intellectual property laws, which basically shouldn't exist in the forms that they do in the West. Um, and um, anybody who's doing that um, might not be taken too seriously by Marxists. Um, but nevertheless, uh, just as there is a a point in um, building um, first socialism in one country, and then a world revolution, and then ultimately uh, techno-communism that's uh, uh, upheld by uh, advanced systems. Um, there is wisdom and wisdom in supporting, say, uh, labor movements in your country in a similar way, even though in uh, a fully realized uh, socialist country, uh, those labor um, unions would not exist in the same way. Um, um, there is an argument to be made for these people uh, support, wanting to support artists, of course. Uh, but um, it's, an, it's a tedious, it's a tedious, if you don't spend so much time on Twitter, for God's sake. <laughs> don't be like Ben Zayed. He's a fucking asshole. <laughs> uh, you know what, I'll read five minutes uh, a little bit. Um, how restrictive contracts stifle and control creativity in the video game industry. Uh, this is from Vice. Another piece of garbage. Uh, why is it a piece of garbage? Well, they do some they do some heavy hitting reporting, Ben Zion. Why are you saying Vice is a piece of garbage? Okay, so uh, if you watch a television, and I don't recommend it, uh, you can watch a television show uh, with a, a wonderfully charming British man named John Oliver. And John Oliver does nothing but make quips and observations about the horrid state of capitalism. Is John Oliver an anti-capitalist? Fuck no. <laughs> John Oliver never says he hates capitalism, not as such. Uh, he always, uh, he, he just talks about the problem and never really actually addresses any solution to a problem. And well, so is this person, a satirist, in the very, very loosest sense of the word. But he's not really speaking truth to power. He's on a corporate a media outlet and, his, and he's just, he's the, the leftmost radical liberal that, um, that the Western establishment will allow uh, to exist and be popular in, in the U.S. Um, uh, so um, uh, that's that's basically how Vice is too. It's a controlled opposition set of frameworks all across the board, no matter where you are. And media is the worst of it, of course, among the worst of it, of course. Um, uh, so this is Vice. They suck. <laughs> uh, every every article every article is prefaced with they, these guys suck. <laughs> Um, um, how restrictive contracts stifle and control creativity in the video game industry. Non-compete non contracts that restrict where people can work are only the start. Companies are also uh, own everything you make and developers are tiring of it. Philip Wojtovitz it was, a, was a software engineer on the hardware infrastructure team of the graphics card company NVIDIA, a job that has many hats and depending on the day could involve debugging graphic features uh, to, to testing video games. One day he got the itch to make a video game. The problem to Wojtovitz, however, was one facing a lot of workers at gaming or tech companies who want to make something separate from the company they work for. They're not allowed to. Mm -mm. When, you're, when, you're, when you work for us, we own everything. Company town. Uh, burn that company town to the ground. <laughs> uh, Non-compete contracts currently illegal in only a handful of states like California and North Dakota are in the midst of being challenged in, nationally by the FTC. Are designed uh, to handcuff employees from working for competitors and sharing trade secrets. But in games, this concept, uh, frequently dubbed as a conflict of interest, uh, can apply more broadly and deter creating personal works. In other situations, the restrictions provide the company you're working for total ownership of the work itself. And again, I will uh, say what I've said before, moments ago, that um, uh, in, in order for this to, to be done, there has to be a complete teardown of the laws. That's why I'm running for president of the United States to abolish uh, the federal government, because uh, the United States only exists for one real purpose, and that is uh, to protect uh, private wealth at the expense of 100 million people in the last 150 uh, years who have been murdered by the United States, um, at the expense of our very earth itself, which is dying uh, because of 
the kind of exploitation that is uh, not, uh, not only protected in a roundabout way, but incentivized by fascists like the United States. The system will never change until we abolish the United States uh, federal government, and I will uh, return that land back to uh, its rightful owners, the Native American people, and that will be done on day one. That process will be begun, um, and uh, there's lo there's uh, good people who are looking at these legal writings, and they say, yes, this is uh, uh, this is technically legal, Ben. You can be president of the United States. So if I'm not on your ballot, I expect you to write me in and uh, share this podcast with your friends, uh, share uh, uh, share my literature and artwork uh, with your friends, uh, because the uh, like. Like I said, of the belt tightening at the top of the show, you might say, well, that's kind of weird. Uh, that's even, that almost seems unseemly or awkward to me. Uh, the choice is to make some uh, relatively small changes now, or your descendants will suffer horribly in a few short years, and possibly you yourself, if you're lucky. <laughs> if, you're, if you're lucky enough to be alive in the end game of end stage capitalism. And I wouldn't count on it. Um, uh, well, I'm, I'm going to end the show, end the show there. Um, uh, this uh, this is an interesting article. Uh, you can uh, you can find uh, uh, Patrick Klepek's article and read the rest about um, about uh, gaming and uh, 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 bad business practices there, if you like. Uh, but um, like I said, the, ma the major point there is none of this shit should even exist. <laughs> Thank you for your time.